Hey, this is Matt. Once again, we're about to other videos. Another paid request is sent for Bobby. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any type of videos or reviews, topics, reactions, what have you, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And like I said, this is for Bobby. Very nice guy. God Raider versus Keen Olga. <laughs> How do these fellas do worse? How do these fellas do worse? I thought the previous two, this is a trilogy of kaiju movies. I thought the first two were bad, and they are. This was even worse. This is like, it's almost as if, if Neil Breen made a kaiju movie. To try to explain this, the commander in the second film, because of how he screwed up in the second film, he's now in the city called Atami. Or do they start off at Atami? I think so. Because, for example, him and his two associates, they're undercover. And their operation is in a public toilet. To look like a public toilet. Which is fitting because this belongs in the shitter. And while they're monitoring stuff. The prime minister. He's fine with. Even though the commander screwed up in the previous film. He's fine if it's there. Because hey if another kaiju screws up. Maybe we'll do the same thing. And the city will get completely destroyed. And we could rebuild and build casinos. Now, if you're thinking that's going to lead anywhere, this whole casino steam, no. And it has these American CIA guys and these two guys who, like, they just got out of, I don't know, Coco Cabana, Benny Hanna's talent show. One of them is literally holding a toy phone. It is literally a toy phone. Literally a toy phone he's holding up. And they're talking about nothing. At one point this is all female group and each time their scenes are shot, everything's like blue. The screen's blue for some reason. And then also from time to time it goes to the Japan Natural Defense. And it's literally action figures. I mean, it's literally, I mean, it just, imagine like an action feeder standing there and just text. Like cut to another shot with other action feeders and just text. And then like other action feeders and text. But they're supposed to be representing real people. So it goes from, you have real people, but each time it goes to this one natural defense group. It. So I can only assume by this and much more... This director purposely mad at me. Well, I'm purposely mad. Purposely made a bad film. I really do think that's the case. He purposefully made a bad film. Hoping to either be a cult classic, because how bad it is, to be a samurai cop, troll 2, Miami connection, you know, that type of birdemic. Although the director says he was serious, but there are people that try to do that. Sharknado films. And to be perfectly honest, I, yeah, I think Birdemic, the guy, he says he really meant to make a good film. It's just he didn't, he was that talented. When you try to make a bad film on purpose, it comes off as usually obnoxious there are people that pull it off black dynamite it's a fun take on blast portation there's purposeful errors and mistakes which are done in a very witty clever way like a guy slapping the guy he really did slap him 
and then a stunt doubles put in is obvious one or boom mics appear but that's done in much better wittier fashion much more sense of timing much more sense of direction uh, even budget this is not that case uh, the characters are all amateur is putting it lightly the effects my friend Michael Keane needs to see this film sometime because he's a big kaiju Godzilla fan uh, Phantasm the choice one every battle scene with the monsters Raidu, I mean Raida, Raidu I think is the, the f first movie, Raida, and this other teen older who's like a subterranean monster, each time you see them, each time there's a fight, there's after effects in front of the camera, where it's sparklers, firecrafters, a orange, I guess supposed to be fire explosion, I mean, think of all of the cheap Adobe type of effects you would do with a free editor on your computer. Imagine every bit of the scene is stuff covering all these creatures. So you can't see what's going on. It's completely incomprehensible. And you can't see shit. So even if you're going into this wanting fun, as people use the word cheesy... I think it's an overused term, but people use that. Tampy models and monster puppetry. You can't see it. Here's, they're here, they're here, then they're here, and they're here, and it's all this shit in front of it that you can't see anything. I've never seen a film, at least not in a long time, literally sabotage itself like that. Even a film trying to be bad. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? I just, I sit here and fumbling around trying to process why that decision was made. Even when you're going, what's going on? What's happening? You can't tell. All these filters in front of each of the battles. And we do, we do see what are the vehicles that the military has. They, I know the joke is, yeah, the models look like toys and a lot of kaiju, Godzilla films. These literally look like... I wait for the price tag to appear at the bottom of this commercial. And some of them have missiles look like foam darts. One of them apparently is alive and tries to have not a Johnny Five voice, but I'm gonna sound like BB from fucking Deadly Friend. Like, beep, beep, beep. And that one gets killed. I think that was the drill with the excavation laser. Or was that another one? There might have been another one. I can't remember. I cannot fucking remember. And really, it's not. There's no plot. It's just. Commander goes to here, CIA talks to this person. Then they go to here. Then they one point go to Tokyo Tower. And they show it as if I had this camcorder and I'm shooting and looking up at it. So it looks like tourist footage of the Tokyo Tower. The music at times is this random soft jazz piano music. Which, do you think that fits in a kaiju movie? There's a thing where a person takes a picture, it's like one old school picture, you know, cameras, but there's no fucking flash. The editing, there's a point where the CIA guy has a toy phone. And literally in that shot, 
in the edit it's now down so it goes from this and then next shot this no you 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 hand it up you put the phone down not from this to this the next frame I, it's like I did trying to be on purpose but it just comes off as not as charming because it doesn't have other bits of witty humor it doesn't have good acting it doesn't have production values like Black Diamond visually try to make itself look like a film from the 70s and the scratches in the film and all the you know dynamite you know the music not the case here yeah the Rapondi defense force that's the all-female military group led by the prime minister's mistress and it's in blue and sometimes even that has some fucking random fire filter effects in front of them why nothing's blown up in this scene just because the director was just bored and said uh, put a filter in there why just because fireworks uh, where are the fireworks coming from sir it don't matter just put them in there fuck it who gives a shit you can find this on YouTube for free There's a tank called the Octopus. That's the one that had the, the AI voice. I remember now. That's the one that had the voice. Because I remember the Death Hand full power. And when it fires its power, it's literally... <laughs> Imagine if I could do some effect where I just put like a couple red squiggly lines and just like put them here it was funny uh, this nice guy old curly jaws he wanted me to react to a trailer made old curly jaws you know Amityville and he purposely you know had buds but they were just like a t fake ones on the screen that don't move that's literally the type of effects this movie had for that type of stuff and Spoiler alert, because I can't explain the action scenes because they're all blocked by filters you can't see. Let me see. The, the G.I. Joes, literal figures, decide to send a fucking missile. Blow up the city, I guess kill everybody, I assume. Then credits roll, and then it adds like another five minutes of, we'll set up the next one, and it's Honolulu, and here's Kudra, and here's Diaz. I'm like, what? Who gives a shit? Why would you want to see that? After seeing this? Why would you ever want to see that? Ever. Why? Why? I don't fucking know why. I don't know why I get mad at shit like this. Because the director obviously didn't give an iota of shit about it. So why am I giving a shit? <clears throat> I mean, the more and more of films like this... And that, that fucking one with the two and a half hour goddamn dolls, just someone's action feeders, the wet ones and all that shit. I just sit there and go, this ain't fucked. Anybody can, you can make a movie. If you're watching out there, you can literally make a movie and get it made. And get it out there. You absolutely can. When the wet ones can, and feeders one and two can, and films like this can. My friend Michael King, he, I guarantee 100% you give him the budget that this guy had. 
I don't care if it was a hundred dollars in pocket change and subway tokens. My friend Michael Keane could make a better kaiju movie than this guy. I stand by it. I'm not exaggerating. Now one goddamn bit. Because I've seen him make Star Trek fan films that are better than this. Production, acting, and more so. And that's Star Trek fan films. But these folks probably got paid to get their film released. Maybe with a rebate coupon, which is this film belongs on rebate. Goddamn Raja and Teen Fuckola Cola. Don't believe me? Watch it yourself. Like all this stuff. You think I'm exaggerating? Go watch it yourself. It's on YouTube for free. <laughs> Acting dog shit. Characterizations? What characterizations? Plot? What plot? The film fumbles around and can barely reach its hour and 17 minute running time. You'll be bored. Kaiju, if you want to try to see through all these filters. Be my guest. And when you try to make a film bad on purpose because you got a couple bucks to your name, that to me is not exciting or funny. It's like the old phrase. Say you're sitting somewhere on a bench and it's cold and there's ice. Someone walks by, they accidentally slip, but then they're okay. I mean, you feel bad, but it's like, okay. Then you know this shit. But then someone stops and they look. And they purposely do it. You just go, what the fuck, are you stupid? Two different reactions. That's why people will sincerely laugh at The Room or Troll 2 or whatever. But not stuff like this. <laughs> it's a lot less charming when you try to do it on purpose. Again, there are ones that have done it and been successful. But, to me, not too often. With that said, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.